June. As you can see, it's another episode of working on my 99 Ford F-250 Super Dirty. It's got the V10, it's a 4x4, and today I'm going to be adding a grab handle to the driver's side A-pillar. You can see I've already begun this project. Uh, this truck came from the factory with a grab handle that mounts in those four holes. And the grab handle looks just like that. Of course, there's a piece of trim here. And I've already pulled that off. It's this. And it's got these cutouts for where the handle mounts. The trim piece on the other side has no cutouts. So I'm going to have to make those cutouts happen. And also, my A-pillar over here does not have any of the hardware here. These uh, captured nuts. So I'm going to have to... Uh, do something about that and I just had an idea Those are the original bolts that hold it in and Over here on the $200 Honda I have these little mounts here where the windshield wiper assembly went and I removed that and I'm saving that for the Jeep project but if you compare these bolts with the original green ones, they have an extra washer, but they're pretty much the same basic size. The head on the green one is an eight millimeter, and the head on this brown one is a 10 millimeter. So uh, that's a little bit of differences. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear away, blow uh, all this dry leaves and stuff out of here, and then I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna get an angle grinder, and just cut this bracket out of here. And then I'm gonna have to cut it in half this way and shorten it to make the holes slightly closer together and then re-weld it together. And when I drill my holes in this side and then add those captured nuts onto the back side over there, sort of similar to what we have here, and It'll be plenty strong, and I'll uh, tack weld them in, and uh, it'll, I think it'll work great. And then the handle will be plenty strong, and then I'll be able to haul my lard ass up into this truck a lot easier. It's really hard for me to get in and out of here these days. So this is my original handle, and I got uh, a second one off of eBay, and it's exactly the same. The seller said it was the driver's side A-pillar, so I expected it to be a mirror image of this, because this is slightly different top and bottom, but it isn't. The one that they sent is just exactly the same as this one. So that's okay. I just have to keep in mind as I'm copying my uh, trim holes here that I need to flip them, because the handle on the other side there you know, on this side, it mounts like this, but on the other side, it's going to have to flip over and mount like that. And so as long as I remember to reverse these, we should all be good. I did a bit more shopping around on the old Honda here. And I found out that I don't really have to cut this off and then cut it in half and then make it closer together when if I take this one right here, the spacing is already correct. So I'll just cut this out. I already cut the one out on the other side. The spacing is perfect and we're in business. I have my uh, backing nuts ready to go. Thank you, Honda. At this point, the Honda's kind of turned into the giving tree. Anything I need, it gives it up. So this is how the handle fits on the passenger side. And you can see on the back here why we have to have those cutouts. Because the handle has sort of a raised area here. So I'm going to try to mount the handle the same height on the driver's side. So when I do that, um, I'm going to have to make some sort of uh, patterns maybe. And I think if I get some 
paper or cardboard or cardstock, something like that. And then just roll this as I'm drawing around the perimeter. I should be able to get a decent, uh, a decent pattern for each one of these. And then I can flip them over and tape them on the other piece that's waiting up here. And then I'll get out my little Dremel tool and very carefully cut them out. Okay, I've set myself up here on a fairly narrow box so I can roll this without it interfering with the weird shapes on the ends. The box is from my, oh, I got new taillights coming soon. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my card right there. I'm going to take my pencil and that's the end. And then slowly roll it. And yeah, I have my two patterns and the patterns are matching the way it's laying right now. And this handle fits like this. So when this handle comes over here, it's going to flip around like this. So I'm going to have to switch the patterns like that. And then I'm going to mark, I mean, you can see they're a little bit different. This has a little more strengthening, but I don't think that's going to matter. And then I'm going to be very careful to mark right where the edges of these are. I'm going to get them lined up just right. And that way I can uh, tape my pattern onto the outside. I'll tape it on this side and then I'll cut it out. Well, I didn't have, uh, well, I didn't really look for very long, but I couldn't find my little Dremel tool. So I ended up using this thing with kind of a worn out blade at the end. These things are pretty cool. Yeah, they're not quite as controlled as a Dremel, but anyway, you'll see here that here it is. The handle is in there. It lines up. Come on now. There we go. It covers any of my messy cuts. And we're ready to remount because there's the original one. I know you want to see how ugly my holes are. Yeah, they're pretty bad. There we go. But it fits nice and tight. So that's not the best tool for cutting. <laughs> but hey, it works. Next, I'm going to reinstall this trim piece with the handle in place and mark exactly where my uh, holes need to be drilled. Okay, there's my test fit with no fasteners yet. So it just needs to be pressed together. So then I'm going to use a Sharpie and mark where all of my holes need to go. And then I'll take all this trim back off and look into drilling. All right, you can see where my marks are and it's going to be kind of uh, hard to drill from this side. So what I'm going to do is maybe get a small drill and go through at a bit of an angle from this side so I can clear the windshield. And then I'll do the actual hole from this side where I've got more of a straight shot because I can do it from that side easy. From this side, I'd be afraid. Well, I'd have to do it at an angle and... I'd be very afraid of breaking the windshield, so don't want to do that. Let me get my drill. Once I had my first hole drilled, I lined it up like this, so you can see inside, if I can get it to focus again. Anyway, you can see inside that I've got a little spot right in the center of where this has to be, and I used a center punch with uh, a hammer. So take this little guy and you find the exact center where you want your drill to be. And give it a nice sharp whack and it leaves a divot. That little divot right there will keep my drill from wandering around even though my focus is wandering around. Here's my first test fit. 
And it looks like it's coming along. Bolts right up. Feels good. Doesn't flex. I got to trim a little bit of rubber back here. And then I think we're good. I decided I didn't want to weld up here if I could possibly avoid it. So I'm going to actually just try to epoxy these back plates on. I mean, they really, uh, they only have to be held there just long enough to get the bolts started. So, and I don't plan on taking this off and on too often. Anyway, that's my plan. Uh, we'll see if that's how it ends up. See you in a minute. Well, there it is. Ugh, helping me in. Okay, this was uh, a project 23 years in the making. The first day I had this truck, I looked over at the passenger side at that lovely grab handle, and I thought, why isn't there one on the driver's side? I went to Ford. I asked, and they said, mm, no, we don't have a driver's side handle. And the A-pillar on the driver's side isn't set up for that kind of thing. You can't just throw it in there. So 23 years later, I finally got around to making it happen. And you know what? It's not very easy. You have to fabricate a bunch of little silly things. You have to modify the handle because it's still just a passenger side handle. So once you flip it over, I had to trim some rubber. And anyway, I was also lucky I was able to scavenge the backing plates off of the $200 Honda. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, the following uh, few little clips are uh, going to be stuff, interesting stuff to me anyway, that I found in the truck when I cleaned it all out. Nice. Hmm. I guess that's why ice picks say, do not put in your ear. Come on, you know that looks comfy. Yeah. So I used to take this truck really far off road. I used to go way up into the mountains around Death Valley. And that's why a lot of this stuff is more safety oriented, at least in my mind. So I've got, uh, it had three different shovels, a saw, an ax, of course a floodlight ways to study up and forecast weather if you're nice and bored uh, controllers for the two different winches uh, i had an ac inverter mounted under the seat this is a cb amplifier which are illegal to use but if you're really far someplace and you're stuck real bad i had this in the truck so i could perhaps get help Never had to use it, thankfully. Snatch block for the winch. More winching stuff. This is a really neat uh, pump. So I could pump up my big tires after airing them down. Uh, had a couple of big ice scrapers. This one's good for reaching way up on the windshield. So let's have a look at this uh, original. There's a 99 Super Duty. Originally was 25.510 and then ended up being 29.810 when it was brand new. Yeah, this is kind of funny. Here it says, uh, now you'll be able to travel places where roads don't. Where roads don't what? <laughs> okay, yeah, I can't imagine really being that much fun doing this if a fire is coming right at you first step don't panic yeah i don't think this would be very much uh fun terrifying <laughs> hopefully it would work so with that in mind i don't have a whole lot of faith in what i'm gonna find in this food bag survival food Okay, I gotta go get a plate. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you can't really read. At least I can't really read what that says or what it used to say. 
All I can see is it says SOS Survival Food Packet. Yeah, I don't see anything else really that's legible. Well, let's see. Calories. Nutrition per serving, but it doesn't really say what it is. Here we've got wheat, vegetable. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to open it with my survival tool here, my Leatherman. Hmm. Yikes. It doesn't really smell that bad. I'd have to be awfully hungry to eat this, but it has the consistency of just sort of a cookie. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Not sure what that is. Let me take the knife to it. Okay, that's weird. Because this is another thing wrapped in plastic that looks like it's more of this same stuff. But why do they have chunks wrapped in plastic inside? <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Maybe if I improve the presentation a little bit. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay, so I'll leave this out and we'll see if the birds want it before I get rid of it. But, you know, I guess if I was hungry enough, I could still eat it. It doesn't smell like it's bad. It looks like it's bad. It just sort of smells like... Uh, I don't know, a cookie I wouldn't like. Well, I'm certainly glad I'm not having to use this thing for any kind of an emergency, because, uh, let's see, you have now acquired a fine quality radio. Oh, boy. <laughs> let's check out this fine quality radio. Um, the first thing I notice is when you uh, look at the back, it shows two AA size batteries going a long ways. And yet when you open it, there's nowhere for the batteries to go. There's this little battery holder, but there's nowhere for it to go. So once you put the batteries in, you cannot close the back. It goes like this. You can't really get the back to completely close because the batteries are against the speaker magnet. <laughs> so, beyond that, it's on. I don't know if you can hear the static, but that's all we got. And the tuning dial acts more like a volume dial. But anyway, you get nothing. <laughs> it's a fine quality Fine quality radio.